Hello everyone and welcome. The team designing the first person shooter module of Star Citizen recently stopped by Twitter, Reddit, and the RSI forums to do a live Q&A and there is a bunch of new information. So I'm going to use this helpful summary by forum user Grand Bagelmeister. So thank you for this Grand Bagelmeister and let's get right into it. The first person shooting mechanics are radically new and the FPS module will be vigilantly balanced. It will be first person only and is built with VR in mind so your gun isn't locked to where you're looking. The module itself will release early next year and receive gradual updates like Arena Commander. There will be many game modes including Seek and Destroy, Team Deathmatch, Capture and Hold, and Co-op PvE, although not on initial release. In the Persistent Universe, the FPS module will be like Arena Commander, playable as an Arena mode. The combat will be tactical, similar to games like Counter-Strike, Rainbow Six, Arma, Delta Force, and Killzone. It will be slow-paced with very fast time to kill, focusing on patience and timing. Trying to be all-out aggressive will likely get you killed. Though heavy armor classes like the Titan and heavy armor, for example, will be durable enough for face-to-face -face combat. It will be more difficult to pick up than your average FPS, but isn't too hard. The skill ceiling, however, is extremely high. It is designed to be used around the entire Persistent Universe sandbox, so it will be available in as many scenarios as CIG can manage. Planetary, space station, ship boarding, zero gravity, and so on. There will be complex mechanics factoring into aim such as recoil, breathing, movement, stance, alertness, iron sights, cover, damage, and zero gravity which all factor into the movement of the gun while aiming, and the bullet goes where the barrel is pointed. The current hanger camera is a placeholder which will be replaced and the movement will significantly be changed from the current hanger movement, and will include walking, running, sprinting, crouching, and sliding. The current jump will be redone to be more realistic and a ledge climbing system will be added as well, but there will not be much parkour movement because CIG doesn't want gymnasts in space. There will also be no bunny hopping. Impacts and explosions can affect your movement and moving will cause view bobbing, however CIG thinks it has implemented systems to simulate realistic movement well enough that nausea will not be a problem. There will be a basic cover system, it will be automated and allow for peeking, leaning, kneeling, and going prone. It will be more of a free cover system like that of Far Cry 3. The cover itself will be destructible in some areas and projectiles can penetrate objects, but since most cover and objects are metal, this won't happen to everything. Weapons are projectile, not hitscan, and their trajectory can be impacted. Zero gravity maneuvering is possible both inside ships and in EVA. It will include thrusters, suction boots, and pushing off of surfaces. When pushing, you can get stuck by pushing yourself out of reach of an object. When thrusting, colliding at high speeds will injure you. Suction boots only work in zero gravity and only allow for standing and the movement will be clunky, but they can be used to walk on ceilings and walls. Changing stance will be important for zero gravity navigation, and generally recoil will not affect momentum in zero G. There will be ballistic, energy, air, and radiation based weapons. There will also be classic weapons which will be old but very rare and usually weak. Grenades, including gas grenades. Gadgets, including holograms, mines, medkits, drills, personal shields, and tripwires. And hand-to-hand -hand combat, including disarming, stealth kills, brawling, and non-lethal knockouts. However, melee may be limited to knives and fists. There is nothing like a katana, for example. Stealth is a major component and players without heavy armor will have to rely on stealth. Levels will accommodate both stealth and non-stealth gameplay. There will be a radar indicator for enemies based on noise and visibility. Weapons and equipment must be carried on your body and can be damaged by shooting or for grenades triggered. Armor type dictates how much can be carried and there is only a crosshair outside of iron sights if you have a compatible helmet. Magazines have persistent ammunition. You will hold partially depleted magazines in your inventory and they will not automatically refill. Magazines have a physical location on your character, and the reloading animation will not reset to the beginning if interrupted halfway through. Currently, the loading system will automatically pick the fullest magazine to load. Weapons will decay, but not too punishingly, and can be affected by the environment, oxygen, radiation, temperature, and gravity. Weapons will have customization, both attachments and ammo, and there will be deployable personal shield devices. Different weapons have different amounts of customization. There will be one-shot kills depending on the player's armor and weapon. Armor will include small mech suits such as Titan armor which is 8 feet tall, and while vehicles probably won't make it into the early FPS, they will be added eventually. The final game will have combined arms combat. Ships can be boarded at set breach points, not just airlocks, by damaging them or using hole cutting devices. You can also sneak aboard ships. Ship systems and select areas of the hull can be damaged by FPS combat just as they can be damaged from ship weapons. Hull breaches can vent anything not bolted down out into space. However, most ships will have automatic airlocks which will engage. The health system will include a total health to which each limb contributes, limb damage effects, and bleeding out. 
Med kits won't fully heal you and come in a variety of strengths and types, and healing actions will have time delays to make you vulnerable. Severely injured people can be moved, but won't be able to move themselves. At least initially, there won't be too much gore. Instead, particles, decals, and animations will show the damage. Limbs probably won't be severed, but they can be damaged beyond use and need to be replaced. This damage to the player's body will affect their actions and will be limb-specific. The left arm can be crippled, but right arm still functioning fine, for example. This will affect character movement and aiming. Cybernetics can be used to replace destroyed limbs and will have both advantages such as less recoil and disadvantages such as damage by EMPs. Though it is part of Squadron 42, first-person shooting will be avoidable in the Persistent Universe. Even if you're boarded or boarding, you can delegate it to other players. As far as FOV sliders go, visual customization is limited by animation and graphical implementation. For example, the HUD is on the helmet, making FOV changes tricky. And that is all the information we have so far, folks. And this is just a summary. Again, if you want to see their exact answers, they're all over Reddit. Um, you can have a look and read it all for yourself, or you can go onto the RSI forums and check it all out. And again, thanks to Grant Bagelmeister. I'm really excited for this. I can't wait to see what they have to offer. And we're going to be getting a sneak peek of the FPS module at PAX Australia very soon. And I'll probably bring you guys an update on all of this when that happens. So stay tuned. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.